Welcome to the online course Essentials of Youth Policy, organised by the partnership between the European Commission and the Council of Europe in the field of youth. Well, my name is Howard Williamson and um, I'm uh, currently Professor of European Youth Policy at the University of South Wales in Wales, in the United Kingdom. Uh, my background is as a practicing youth worker. I ran an open youth centre for 25 years and was a volunteer before that, have been a volunteer after that. And um, I've been a policy advisor on a whole range of youth issues, uh, formal education, vocational training, drugs, crime, youth work, um, housing, uh, other things, including outdoor uh, public parks and many other interesting little sidelines in youth policy. Uh, with both the uh, UK government since the 1980s, the Welsh government since the 1990s, and with the European Commission and the Council of Europe since the 1980s, and the UN a little bit um, throughout that time. Thanks, Howard, for joining this interview and for contributing to our online course on Essentials of Youth Policy. You're very welcome, Livinus. It's good. Yeah, Thank and I, I know you hold really long experience in consulting different uh, governments and countries on uh, youth policy development. And we look to find, of course, at uh, different elements uh, and steps to build a youth policy strategy. We're coming to the moment um, to look actually how to put that in practice. So what are the main stages? From your experience, you can share how long does it take to develop a youth policy strategy and probably if you saw a different kind of durations, uh, different kind of spans, yeah? Yeah. so it uh, would be interesting to hear uh, your experiences and also advice for people who are trying to do it perhaps for the first time. Well, yes, different durations, you know, in English we have a, an expression, how long is a piece of string and uh, in a way any element of youth policy is a completely unpredictable timeline. It uh, it's, uh, can be subject to all kinds of twists and turns. Sometimes it accelerates, sometimes it slows down. Sometimes it does happen quite quickly, sometimes it never happens. It's, it's almost impossible to predict. Uh, there are lots of bear pits and pitfalls that uh, are encountered along the way that probably can be avoided with some care. But I, I've been involved in uh, public policy development, spending hundreds of millions of pounds that have perhaps taken no more than three, four, five months between a sort of political vision and practical implementation on the ground. But that requires phenomenally high level political championship, very regular pressure to keep the momentum going, mm -hmm. Uh, collaboration between all the key actors without too much fighting between them about the idea, uh, lots of compromises, often quite broad policy visions that allow different people to interpret it differently on the ground. The narrower the interpretation, the more prescribed the policy is, the longer it will probably take to really make an impact on the ground. Uh, I've been involved in policies that were kind of thought up in one decade and found their way into public policy the following decade. You know, they took 10 years uh, because prime ministers and ministers were not very keen at the start, but the idea bubbled around, often got corrupted and distorted and twisted and adapted uh, during those years. But then another minister comes into position and they, they kind of remember it as something that perhaps they were involved in seven, eight years before and suddenly they say, oh yes, I'm quite interested in that. That's so uh, there's different ways, the timeline, the pathway, whatever you want to call it, the journey unfolds. And Something I wrote a long time ago, 15 years ago, called the four Ds or the eight Ds, which is like a clock. Um, and uh, I built that sort of model from uh, reading many of the youth policy reviews that the Council of Europe have done in various countries in Europe, very different kinds of countries, but you can see similar patterns. And the point about it being a circle or a cycle uh, is to convey the message that it is like a clock, it ticks at different speeds, uh, so it's unlike a clock in that regard. It can stop 
and it can start at different points. It can also be blocked or be accelerated at different points. And at the top of the clock at midnight or midday and in the middle of the circle is this notion of political championship and political drive. If you haven't got that, if you haven't got politicians locally, regionally, nationally on your side, uh, interested in and willing to take forward your particular campaign, uh, it will never happen. But it doesn't have to start with the, po the politicians. It can start at different points. And uh, it can start at six o'clock at the bottom where I've got something called um, debate. And debate is really about um, professionals working together, perhaps a local project. I've seen, I've seen national youth policies built on the basis of a single local project that a politician has heard about, visited, learned more about and thinks, well, we need one of those in every community or we need one of them in every region. Youth friendly clinics, mentoring programs for young offenders. Sometimes they come out of uh, dedicated practitioners getting together, having a conversation building a project locally with some local funding or some European funding or funding from somewhere, philanthropic funding. And, uh, you know, hey presto, it suddenly catches on. Sometimes for good, sometimes for bad, because a lot of bad youth policy has also emerged because a politician only wants every project to look like one that they visited and they like. So you've got drive and decision making at the top, the political stuff, you've got the debate at the bottom, the professional stuff. And going round from the professional stuff, you've got what I call dissent. Well, you'll have disagreement and then you've got development of an idea that you have to share. So you have to have compromises after the dissent to get the sort of development of an idea that is supported broadly in the policy making area, whether that's youth justice or whether that's uh, substance misuse or even formal school curriculum stuff. And then you get direction. This is how we think this could unfold. And then you have to knock on the doors and literally knock on the doors of politicians, you know, metaphorically and literally. You can try and seek a, a, a meeting, you, you can write a letter, you can e email, you can communicate in lots of different ways, but you have to have a sense of direction. The first thing they will ever ask you is, so how might we take this forward? You know, what, how much money is involved? Who do you think we need to uh, win in terms of hearts and minds? Do we need nurses involved, police officers involved, youth workers, um, teachers? Uh, psychologists, psychotherapists, family therapists, clinical psychologists, and so on and so forth. It's very much about advocacy. That's that side of the of the clock, if you like. That's from six o'clock to twelve o'clock, and mm -hmm. uh, it's about building a, an advocacy basis, and then thinking about where do you want to make those arguments. The most effective way of winning the argument is to make the politician think that it's their own idea. So you have to be quite humble about. Um, also keeping fairly quiet about ideas that were actually your ideas, but they think it was their ideas. A, a small D, which is the decentralization question, which is at a sort of a five past ten past the hour, and then the quarter past the hour, which is delivery. Uh, the decentralization question is what are the kinds of vehicles or mechanisms you've got to actually deliver in your own country in the 1990s in Lithuania trust was really placed in the hands of a number of significant NGOs to deliver central government vision to the ground largely because municipalities and civil society municipalities had not really formed sufficiently to uh, be able to do it through local government practice you know, it can come from many different places but you've got to have resources, human and financial, uh, decentralized so that you've got practice available on the ground. And that's the delivery question. Does the policy really reach the right kids at the right time in the right way? Too often it doesn't. But once you've got delivery, the real issue is that invariably there's unintended consequences, unanticipated obstacles. There's a whole range of hitches that can appear 
And one of the big problems is stubborn politicians don't want to hear about the problems. They want to celebrate that they've introduced a policy. So delivery problems need to be addressed. And di another D, as you move around the clock, is difficulties. And we have to have platforms for recognising that there will always be hiccups, difficulties, obstacles, challenges in the delivery of policy. And how do we tweak and twist existing policy? Or sometimes how do we abandon it and think about we need a different policy? I've been many a flagship youth policy which um, stubbornly drives forward, wastes millions of euros or pounds uh, because very senior politicians have put their political capital behind it and they're not willing to acknowledge that it's not working. And, it, and that takes us right round the clock, in fact, to, because difficulties requires debate. And that's where the professionals need to come in and say, you know, are these, this, is this sense of difficulty shared across different professional groups? So there's not always consensus amongst the professional field as to what counts as a difficulty, but it does need a discussion. And the final point about the clock is, is really that it can start or stall at any point. So that when we're talking at a national level, we have to think about, you know, is anything really happening at the local level, which it often is not. Uh, then when we look at local practice, we have to look at, you know, is this, in English we always say, is it trying to force square pegs into round holes? You know, are we sort of engaging with the right kinds of young people? Are they responding? Are they finding it valuable in a useful purposeful and positive experience. We have to look at, you know, are we talking too much and not moving things forward in the bottom of the clock, uh, the six o'clock bit where, it, you know, is the debate productive or are, are we just going around the same discussion again and again and again? Isn't it time to come up with a, a short pamphlet or as you said yourself just now, a kind of, you know, advocacy framework. So let's, let's move things forward politicians don't wait for us to finish they they move elsewhere so we have to think about that bit of the timeline and then we have to think about uh you know and what are we going to actually say how are we going to get access to uh, political championship we hope this video contributed to your learning about youth policy